Ease and comfort cover us like a warm blanket the moment we see his shiny, perfectly shaped bald head on screen. His face is sharpened by lines created from his serious demeanor that vanish instantly with his unexpected charming smile. We know he'll pull his uniform down tightly, setting his military bearing before beguiling us with his melodic yet passionate British accent, a combination of which promises intellectual gymnastics unequaled by any other captain in the Federation. We know children make him nervous. He likes his Earl Grey tea hot, and he can play one hell of a Resican flute. The point is, we know Jean-Luc Picard. After 32 years of sharing adventures with him on TV and on the big screen, we probably know him better than many of our own family members. And other than during his temporary stay in the Nexus or experiencing the life of Cayman, thanks to an alien probe, Jean-Luc Picard never had children. Until now. Wait until you see how the pieces of this puzzle fit together. If you are intrigued by what the new Star Trek Picard series is going to bring us, you aren't going to want to miss this one. Consider subscribing to our channel and hitting the notification bell for more videos like this one. Beg your pardon. I said shut up. As in close your mouth and stop talking. Okay, back to Picard. So let's just get right into it. During San Diego Comic-Con, we were given our first real glimpse of what we can expect in the new series, and to say it was a doozy is an understatement. No one expected to see Seven of Nine and Data, and since then we've learned that Will Riker and Deanna Troy will also be on the show. But that bombshell took the focus off the most important part of the trailer, the girl who seems to kickstart the next chapter in Picard's life by coming to him for help. During the two-minute trailer, we learn quite a bit about this young lady. She doesn't seem to know who she is, Starfleet security can't slow her down, and other people seem to know who she is and are terrified by her, specifically that she is the destroyer and the end of all. Heavy, huh? Regardless of what other people think she is, we think we've uncovered the most important aspect about her. She's Picard's daughter. No! No! Now, a lot of people have floated this idea out there, but without any substantial reasoning to back it up. What we are about to show you will not only make it possible, but the pieces all fit together to make it a near certainty. And while that alone would be amazing, wait till you hear what her purpose is. But more about that in a moment. We know what you're asking yourself right now. How is it even possible that Picard could have a daughter? No, he wasn't doing the horizontal mambo with Dr. Crusher and accidentally brought a Wesleyana into the world. The truth is a lot more clinical. Are you ready for this? The reality is that Dodge is actually the daughter of Picard and the Borg Queen. Yes, you heard it right the Borg Queen. Let that marinate for a second, and we'll break it all down for you. <sighs> but there's nothing rational about this. Who needs rational when your toes curl up? Some of the obvious hints about Dodge being a former Borg come from the trailer. A mystery woman who doesn't know who she is has a giant wound on her forehead where a Borg implant may have once been. Then there is all the shots of the Borg being worked on in what looks like a research base or jail. There are also the scenes of Dodge taking out people with her superhuman ability. What about the subdued Romulan shrieking out that she is the destroyer and the end of all? Sounds pretty Borgish, right? All of this together is enough to convince us of a Borg background. But then Seven of Nine shows up, and that seals the deal. Something very Borg is happening in this series. But that doesn't explain why she's his daughter. Although everything inside of her says she is safe with Picard, and let's be real for a second. Picard is 97 years old at the start of the show. That's right, if Picard was born in 2305 and the current year is 2402, that makes Picard the second coming of Methuselah, and he isn't going on another royal adventure without having some skin in the game. And that skin comes in the form of his daughter Dodge. Now, we know a lot of people think the Picard show takes place in 2399 because it's been advertised as taking place 20 years after the events of Nemesis in 2379. But after further research, Alex Kurtzman told reporters back in January that it's been 20 plus years since we last saw Picard. 
Compare that with the narrator from the first Picard trailer saying it has been 15 years since Picard commanded the greatest rescue armada in history. This event can only be in 2387 when the Hoba star went supernova and destroyed the Romulan system. So by being able to lock down our current date, we can go back into his life and pinpoint where and how his daughter came to be. We know from the movie First Contact that the Borg Queen had intended Picard to become her equal counterpart and ease the burden of loneliness. We all know that's code for let's Netflix and chill. But Picard withstood her, and as far as we know, nothing funky ever happened. Besides, a little Borg off the old block would have never survived. The Borg cube Locutus was on exploded into a million pieces, and in first contact, Data savagely tossed the Queen into a warp core plasma coolant, and that ending wasn't very attractive. Does the Borg Queen even have a womb? So there's no way this happened in the traditional sense, and the Borg isn't behind it. So who did it? Remember when we said the truth is a lot more clinical? That's right, Dodge is a construction. But by who? Who is the only crazy race of humanoids, in this region of the Alpha Quadrant anyways, who would do something like this? You guessed it, the Romulans. Well, maybe the Cardassians too. Laugh all you want. History will prove me right. But this, definitely the Romulans. But why? How? This is where things get interesting. From Star Trek Nemesis, we know that the Romulans created Shinzon a clone of Picard that was played very well by a young Tom Hardy. We learned that the Romulan government had planned to supplant Captain Picard with his cologne in order to have a Romulan agent in the upper echelons of Starfleet. This of course got us thinking, when exactly did the Romulans get Picard's DNA? This Shinzon dude is young, but he's no child when we see him in Nemesis. As a child, he was sent to work as a slave laborer in the Dilithium Mines on Remus, when the Romulan government changed their mind about replacing Picard with a Romulan agent. Shinzon was drafted out of the mines during the Dominion War, and he proved himself very capable with that Picard blood running through him. In the Star Trek Nemesis novelization, Beverly Crusher said Shinzon was created in 2354, about 25 years before the events in Nemesis. It's explained that Picard was chosen to be cloned because he is one of the Federation's most decorated and celebrated captains. Those Romulans even put temporal RNA in Shinzon so that he could quickly age to Picard's age when the time came. But have you noticed that something is odd about this? If Shinzon was created in 2354, Picard didn't even become captain of the Enterprise until 10 years later in 2364. Don't get me wrong, Picard was no slouch before the Enterprise, but decorated and celebrated? Not yet. In 2333, serving as Lieutenant Commander of the USS Stargazer, 28-year-old Jean-Luc Picard assumed command of the vessel when the captain was killed on the bridge. It made him one of the youngest Starfleet officers to attain the position, and he remained in command of the Stargazer for 22 years until 2355. That's right, a year before he left the Stargazer, his clone was created. As captain of the Enterprise, we understand why the Romulans would want to clone him, but there is almost nothing notable that Picard accomplishes on the Stargazer that would make the Romulans take notice of him. The famous Picard maneuver didn't even happen until his clone was already a year old. So why did they choose him? The answer, it turns out, is because they already knew Picard was going to be important in the future. What are you talking about, Willis? That's right. The Romulans knew the great Picard was coming, and it may have started with a clone, but it would end with a daughter. Do you remember that season-ending cliffhanger where the Borg beam Picard off the ship and turn him into Locutus? He would go on to the Battle of Wolf 359 and lay waste to Federation ships before being rescued by his crew. But just before all of that happened, there was yesterday's Enterprise. It's the episode where the Enterprise C comes through a temporal rift from the past and ends up face to face with Picard and the Enterprise D. At the moment Enterprise C comes through, Picard's crew instantly changes. They go from a ship of exploration to a ship at war with the Klingons. The only person on board that realizes everything has changed is Guinan. Of course, the biggest change is that Tasha Yar is alive and well in this new reality. 
The Enterprise C came through the time rift 22 years into the future, decimated and on its last leg. We learned that Romulan warships had attacked the Enterprise during a raid on a Klingon outpost. The outpost was destroyed, the Romulans were never discovered, and it started a 20-year war between the Federation and the Klingons. Guinan convinces Picard to send Enterprise C back and correct history. Why this is important is because Tasha Yar requests to go back with the Enterprise C after she learned she was already dead and didn't belong in this timeline. Picard allows her to go back. Enterprise C goes through the rift and time changes back, but of course no one but Guinan ever realizes it. Very clever, right? Well, here is why this story is so important to the current Picard show. When the Enterprise C successfully defends the Klingon outpost, Tasha Yar is captured. Fully expecting to die, she went back 22 years to 2344 and survives. With all of her knowledge of the future, and all of her knowledge of Picard and his many accomplishments to come. Tasha avoids execution after catching the eye of the Romulan general who led the attack. She becomes his consort. A year later, she gave birth to a daughter named Sela. Sela would end up playing a big part in the future of Romulan politics. But when Sela was four years old, Tasha attempted to escape. Sela cried out, not wanting to be taken from her father. Tasha was discovered and executed. We believe it was during this five-year period that Tasha spoke of Picard either to the Romulan general or to someone else in the general's compound. The general survived a coup of the government by a new leader and remained in favor for many years. That favor, we believe, came as a result of the knowledge he provided the Romulan cloning program about Picard as a future Starfleet superstar. With Tasha being executed in 2349 and Shinzon created in 2354, it was in this five-year window that the Romulans were able to attain Picard's DNA. At that time, he was still the commanding officer of the Stargazer, but he was participating in the Cardassian Wars. We also know that the Romulan Tal Shiar secret police was working with the Cardassian Union during this time. The Tal Shiar play an important role in Romulan politics, and it just happens to also be responsible for a little operation that includes cloning a Starfleet captain. They would have had multiple opportunities during those years to obtain Picard DNA. Now that we know how and when the Romulans got Picard specimens, we can follow other clues that show us Dodge is his daughter. In the trailer, there are various scenes that show a Romulan experimentation facility and high security prison with a sign that reads 5,843 days without assimilation. That sign is critical because it means this facility has existed since at least 2384. And if that's the case, then that means it wasn't destroyed by the Hoba supernova and is located in a secret place away from Romulus run by the Tal Shiar. This means that this facility is most likely the same place Picard's clone was created. In the Picard trailer, we know that the Romulans have somehow gotten their hands on a Borg cube, and they've had the thing for some time. It's likely they captured it in 2378, when future Admiral Janeway traveled back in time to destroy the Borg Unicomplex. Janeway allowed herself to be assimilated, sending a neurolytic pathogen from the future, severing the queen from her hive. This confusion would have given the Romulans enough time to capture the cube and bring it back to its secret facility with all the drones inside. What would any government do at this point? They would start to study and find out how to turn it into an advantage. If the Romulans captured the Borg cube in 2378, it was the very next year that Picard's clone Shinzon would come out of left field to shock everyone. It would have been during 2378 that Shinzon set his plan in motion to capture Picard, forming an alliance with several Romulan officials planning to overthrow the government. As you recall, he operated out of a secret base that he captured from the Tal Shiar. It was at this secret base that Shinzon and his people were developing a deadly Thaleron radiation weapon that would eventually wipe out the entire Romulan Senate. We believe this is the same base where the Borg cube and drones were being kept. Thus, for a very short period of time, Picard's clone was the leader of the Romulan Star Empire and hell-bent on conquering the Alpha Quadrant to prove he is greater than the great Jean-Luc Picard. 
Shinzon ordered the creation of a new Borg queen. Knowing the historical significance of Locutus to the Borg, Shinzon would use Picard's DNA, kept on cryofreeze all these years, to create a Borg army controlled by a queen he controlled. With his Thaleron radiation and the new Borg weapon, he could conquer the rest of the Alpha Quadrant easily. But we all know how that worked out for Shinzon. Of course, Picard won the day. Riker went on to captain the USS Titan, and Picard would only be captain of the Enterprise for another two years. Unbeknownst to Picard, while this transition was happening, a small baby girl was born. And with a laboratory and detention facility the only world she would know, it would be 25 years before she met her father in a vineyard in France. We believe that shortly after the supernova, a faction of the homeless Romulan Empire took control of the secret facility and has been planning to show the rest of the Alpha Quadrant what it feels like to lose your home world. And how would they do it? With an army of Romulan-controlled Borg led by their own Borg queen named Dodge. She's in serious danger. Dodge likely broke out of the facility when she found out what the Romulans' plans were for her she would go to the only man she thought would help her. If the cut on her head is not from a Borg implant, it could be that she hit her head and that's what's causing her amnesia. Let's face it, this makes a lot of sense. Patrick Stewart can only carry this show so far as he approaches 80 years old. It does look like we'll have him for at least two seasons, but how great would it be for him to set up his daughter to carry on the Picard legacy as part of the Federation? And if the show is called Star Trek Picard, you will need a Picard in the starring role after Patrick Stewart leaves. While the premiere date for the show is still not set, it will air on CBS All Access sometime in early 2020. Engage. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Are you convinced that Dodge is Picard's daughter? If you are excited about the upcoming Picard series and enjoy content like this, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get our next video. And of course, if you like this video, smash that like button like Romulus exploding from a supernova. What, too soon? Also, make sure you share this video with other Romulan friends you know looking for a new home. And here's something new. If you want a behind the scenes look at how this theory was born and what went into making this video, visit us at patreon.com slash popcast guys or subscribestar.com slash the popcast and support the channel. Help us continue bringing you videos you love. And until next time, make it so.